Hello everybody, it's Mr. McNally again. Today we're going to continue our study of ecology by looking at the relationships between organisms within an ecosystem. So for your information, if you downloaded or printed the notes from uh, this PowerPoint presentation, we're starting at slide 16 and we're gonna keep uh, going all the way through slide 23. So today, like I said, we're talking about the relationships between organisms in an ecosystem and they break down into two basic groups, and you may have learned this earlier in the year, but the first group would be our autotrophs. And the word autotrophs uh, means uh, produces their own food. So organisms that do photosynthesis, like plants. Okay, they're also called producers because they produce food. They make it. The other type of organisms are heterotrophs, and they're the opposite of autotrophs, so they cannot produce food. They have to acquire or get food by consuming it. Somehow they have to get food from the environment into their bodies. These are examples of animals and humans. They eat in some way to get their food and nutrition. They're also called consumers. Consume means to take in. Uh, you're a consumer of... Uh, music um, because you buy music, or you're a consumer of clothes because you buy clothing. You're also a consumer of food because you have to get food every day to survive. Some of those consumers are considered herbivores, and if you know the word herb because your parents cook with herbs, or you do, uh, those are plants. Herbivores are organisms that eat only plants. This actually means eat, vore, uh, eat plants. Then there are other organisms that eat meat. Carne, if you know Spanish, carne means meat. They eat meat. Those are your carnivores. And then there's species like humans that are eating both plants and animals. We are considered omnivores. Other omnivores would be things like raccoons and bears because like and monkeys, because like us, they eat both plant and meat for food. Then we go over to this side, we talk about the decomposers. If something decomposes, it rots away and it becomes part of the earth. Uh, decomposers are organisms that consume waste and dead materials. So things like bacteria would be a good example of decomposers. Another one um, that is an example would be fungi. So if you see mushrooms growing in your yard, a lot of times I find them where my dog uh, did his business, so to speak, because they like to consume the waste from uh, other organisms and dead material to recycle it back to nature. Certain types of organisms are called parasites. Parasites are organisms that live within or on other species and get their nutrition from them. So an example of a parasite on a human or a dog would be a tick. Um, it doesn't necessarily or doesn't usually kill the host or organism it lives on, but it does consume all of its nutrition from that other organism and uh, harms them in some way. Scavengers are not to be confused with the composers, but they also get their food from dead organisms. But unlike bacteria and fungi, which um, break it down and return it to the soil, Scavengers just eat the flesh or the meat off of the dead organism. Examples would be vultures or crows that you see um, by dead animals in the road. They're, they're not breaking the material down. They're just eating the meat for themselves. And they leave the bones and the bits that they can't eat there to be finished off by those decomposers. And the last thing we're going to talk about is predator prey. And a predator is an organism that hunts and kills something and prey is the organism that gets eaten. This is different from a parasite because a parasite usually keeps the host alive. The predator actually kills the uh, animal that it's going to eat for food. And we'll get back into all of these later in the week. We can show the ecological or food relationships between species in a nice pyramid. And what the pyramid uh, shows is that at the bottom, the base, we have a very, very big group of producers or plants. So we could substitute the word plants here, or we could substitute the word photosynthesis here. It's organisms that get their energy from the sun and make their own food. 
There has to be a lot of these. So if you look at a rainforest, it's mostly trees. If you look at a grassland, it's mostly grass. Uh, there is way more plants than animals in any ecosystem. Even if you just drive through Patrog Medford and you look around, you see more plants, trees, shrubs, flowers than you do animals. They produce all the food that everything else is going to have to eat. So above the producers are those organisms that we called herbivores or primary consumers. So this picture shows you the producers on the bottom, the plants. This one shows you the primary consumers above them, also known as the herbivores. And an example they're showing you here is a mouse, could be a deer, a rabbit, anything that eats only plants. Those are your primary or your first consumers. Now, when we move up the pyramid, there are organisms, carnivores, that eat the herbivores. So the snake would eat the mouse and get the energy that the mouse had into its body. Those are your secondary consumers. So the energy moved up from the producers into the primary, or herbivores, and then it goes up to the secondary, or carnivores. And the energy can get passed a couple more times. Most energy pyramids end with uh, on the fourth level because there's a limited amount of energy that could exist in nature. But the above them would be considered tertiary, which just means third, or the top predator. In this case, it's an eagle or a hawk. So we always start with plants, producers. Then we go to primary consumers or herbivores. Then we go to secondary consumers or carnivores. And that continues till we get to the top where there is the top predator. There's always fewer organisms at the top very small space up here, than there are at all the levels below it. The amount of energy goes from the bottom where there's a lot of it, and it gets used and burned and uh, it decreases till you get to the top. That's why there's always so many more producers. There'll probably be a lot of rabbits or mice. There'll be fewer snakes, and there'll be very few uh, hawks or eagles that would be at the top. You don't see many of those because there's not a lot of energy to support them. All right, just to go a little bit more into specifics about each of those levels and to show you some examples. Producers, as we said, plants, grasses, trees, shrubs, vegetables, any uh, organism that gets its energy from the sun. These are also called autotrophs. They're organisms that produce their own food through the processes such as photosynthesis. They receive their energy directly from the sun. They make their food. When we leave the plants, we go up to the consumer levels, and the first level is the primary consumer. Uh, any consumer is an organism that consumes or eats another for energy. They're also called heterotrophs. Consumers can be herbivores or carnivores or omnivores. The herbivore eats only plants. The carnivore eats only animals and the omnivores eat both plants and animals, like the bears and the human. So again, primary consumer is also known as an herbivore, and a secondary consumer is also known as a carnivore. And the tertiary or higher order consumers are the ones at the top, the top predators in an energy pyramid. Predator and prey, in this picture, you can see an example of the predator and the prey. I don't know if you know the two words well enough yet, but in this example, the prey is the mouse that's going to get pounced on by the owl. The owl is the predator. The predator kills the prey and eats them. Examples other than the owl would be a lion or a hawk. You could say a shark. You could even say um, you know, something smaller like a, a snake or um, a praying mantis that just eats other bugs. They will all are just eating other animals for food. The prey is what gets eaten. The mice, the rabbits, the antelope, okay, the small fish that gets eaten by the shark. And we talked before about scavengers. Scavengers eat the remains of animals that have died. And you see them in movies a lot of times, these vultures circling around organisms that are about to die from starvation or disease or whatever, and they will find the leftover carcass or the dead bodies and they will pick them clean of flesh. Around here the biggest one we see are the crows. They, tend, they fill that role. 
um, for roadkill. Decomposers are much more um, involved uh, and necessary than the scavengers because they actually take whatever's left and they return it to the soil. And that actually adds nutrients to the soil for other uh, plants to start growing. So mushrooms or fungi is a good example that we can see, but the other ones are often bacteria, which are invisible to our eyes because they're so small, but they're all everywhere in the ecosystem. So they obtain the nutrients by breaking down the remains of dead plants and animals. Examples, like we said, are fungi, worms, and bacteria. They enrich the soil. They return energy back into the ecosystem. They break down organic material, which returns the nutrients back to the soil for plants to grow. So the last thing we're going to talk about today is the food chain, which is really just the energy pyramid that we saw, just written a different way using arrows. And the arrows, what's important to understand, the arrows don't point to the, what's being eaten. They point to where the energy is going. So we talked about the bottom level of the uh, triangle, which was the producers or the um, plants. The plants, in this case grass, is getting their energy from the sun, and they're passing energy directly to the grasshopper because the grasshopper will be getting its food from the plant. So the energy mo moves from the grass to the grasshopper. The frog will catch some of these grasshoppers and eat them, so the frog is going to get the energy from the grasshopper. So the energy moves to the frog. So some of those frogs will get eaten by this raccoon, so the raccoon is the next level of the food chain here because the energy goes from the frog into the raccoon, and eventually, at the very end of its life, the raccoon will be broken down by this bacteria of decay or other organisms. Maybe some scavengers will pick some flesh off of his bones too. But eventually he'll be decayed and become part of the soil, which will return nutrients back to the grass. So it's a series of organisms in which food energy is passed on in an ecosystem. The arrow shows who receives the energy. So it's very important that you know that the arrows go the direction of the energy flow. All right, we're going to stop there at slide 23. And when we pick up, uh, I think actually next week, we're going to talk about a food web. Any questions, please make sure you message me. Uh, it's been great working with you. Mrs. Uh, Gonzalez will be back soon. So um, I'm sure you're going to be happy to have her helping you out again before the end of the year. Uh, take care, guys. Have a great weekend.